What's going on everybody, it's Tom and it's Jamie. Welcome to the Chronicles of Podcast. The Chronicles of Bloodstock 2024. I am Seb from Dumbledore Kids. Hi, I'm Calvin from Dumbledore Kids. Yeah. It's them bloody kids. Them again, bloody off kids. Sake. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Shake the fist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How was your personal Saturday treating you? Pretty good. I mean, we've been camping in Midgard, you know, all weekend, so we're ready to go. Yeah, yeah it's been yeah. good. We went for a shower and artist camping, which was nice. Not not having to wait for hours in the queue. Yeah. So oh, that's been fun. I had a nice, refreshing shower for the first time. I think that might be my first ever festival shower, and I've been to like 20, so I'm a oh, dirty yeah. bastard normally. Yeah, uh, by, by this time in the weekend, you don't want to be near me. I can't, so, say, I can't say I blame you. When we're signing in tomorrow, people are going to be like, fuck yeah. yeah. Honestly, yeah, yeah, you know what? It's no point. That's how it goes, mate. It's, exactly. It's going to be like 59 degrees tomorrow, so. Oh, I, my I, lord. I, I couldn't believe the showers are warm, you know. That's, um, was it actually warm, was it? It was warm. Yeah, oh, yeah it was, warm. Nice. It was okay. amazing. It was seriously great. You're the first person to tell us that they're warm. So that's interesting. I mean, I think. We're probably used to just like a shit shower. My boiler's fucked, so. Oh, uh, okay. All so all it's all better than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All the festivals I've been to, they had cold showers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The German so festivals. It's because um, they're hardcore in Germany. They're like, cold shower, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't yeah. do the heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 do the shower. It's not a tumor. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry. we are completely gone off time. So right, right. Don't apologize. We love tangents. It's all good. Um, excited for later. Absolutely, yeah, we can't wait. I mean, we've been looking forward to this since we won the Metal to the Masses, you know, it's been eight weeks since we've just been dreaming about it, so. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm so gassed. I've been really nervous in the coming weeks to it, but now I'm like, I'm, I'm there, I'm That's vibing, I'm feeling it? like, um, we're ready to smash it, man. We've been giving out like 250 lighters, so if any of you got a lighter, big up. Uh, with, yeah, yeah, just letting people know about the set time, and so I'm just I'm pretty confident it's going to be a good day. I think the good thing about Bloodstock is that people will go and see anything and everything yeah. because they want to, you know, get to know new music and that sort of thing. Well, so that's the heart and soul of the festival, isn't it? Yeah. Really, it's like a good place to discover new tunes and new music and new fucking yeah, new bands and artists. But yeah. for a them bloody kids show compared to a them bloody kids festival set, do you change the setters up accordingly so people might not be so familiar with yourselves here? Say, so you want to put out all the bangers. I think for this set, we just wanted to give everyone a good taste of just like our general sound. So we've, we've, we've sort of put a bit of everything in there, really. So people have an idea of what we are as a whole, I think. Yeah, and obviously we know it's like a metal festival. So we, we've sort of, our stuff, some of our stuff can be more rocky. So we've made sure that we've sort of turned up the gain on that shit and yeah. a bit more screaming and shouting nice. and uh, getting people in the pits. That's the that's the idea. So, I mean, we, we're quite an eclectic band. We've got like metal tunes and rock tunes and punk tunes, but we tried to make everything a little bit more towards that metal sort of vibe. So, so uh, people are vibing here that's, that's of it, yeah phenomenal so us as a podcast we're ambassadors for the sophie lancaster foundation are you, oh amazing yeah yeah, I, yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. The foundation that answers that question yeah so we're talking to artists this weekend basically just trying to find out some information because we know we were all treated badly when we were younger growing up part of this community 100 I, I think every person we spoke to has gone yep so we want to know what are sort of the what's the word i'm after here these stereotypes that have been placed upon you just because you're part of this community and is it something that still affects you today like oh but he's a fuck but he worships the devil and like have have you had to put up with that sort of thing yeah uh funnily enough i wrote my dissertation i did songwriting at uni and uh, i wrote my dissertation on like satanism within metal and like how like the the idea of people being sort of judged for the way you know being like oh these guys are satanists these are evil these guys are going to hell like these hardcore christians look at sort of anyone dressed in all black with some tattoos as you know bad, bad person so it's like we just, it was it, it's really close to our hearts you know like i mean we uh, both of us were bullied at school for being different yeah. and uh i mean i didn't know i was ginger and fat so i mean that, that goes towards it but i mean we've you know yeah i it, mean I've, I've always had the stereotype you know i'm tall and german so in school people always call me you know the nazi and stuff like that you know but so we've yeah. had our fair share but i mean exactly, yeah. I, 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 the the sort of like more like the Grebo one, you know, like first classic up north we get Grebo like for like a goth kid, like you know, and yeah. so like yeah, all the abuse we've had it, it's shit. People need to get over themselves. Like I, might, I got called that so many times when I was younger, and still now at 38 years of age, I've no idea what a Grebo is. What does that word even mean? Uh, I have literally no idea. I think it's supposed to mean like sweaty and like. Yeah, I don't know. It's just supposed to mean a sweaty goth kid, I think. It's a very odd but it's, word. It's very weird, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, to be fair, taking any of the meaning away from it, it's quite a, like, it's got quite a ring to it. I quite like it, I don't yeah. like it as a word, but I don't like the meaning. Like, <laughs> fuck off, man, well, you know? I think because of that, that's sort of why, you know, Seth formed the band. I mean, the band named Them Bloody Kids, I think it sort of represents that yeah, in a way. Come, it all comes mm. from, you know, being... I, 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 
I think my the, my bullying as a kid led me to be a bit of a rebellious kid and just sort of fuck you to all authority and then yeah. that's that led us to today here we are them bloody kids yeah <laughs> so another thing we're trying to find out as well because obviously when we were growing up and when what happened to Sophie and now fast forward to 2024 the world is a very different place oh yeah so do you think it's easier to grow up as part of this community now or still work to be done uh, I think there's always work to be done but I think we're, we're at a point now in society at least in the better parts of uh of like the country and stuff where people are really accepting you know we've got a lot of like uh the, the like the gender stuff that's coming through and people are starting to be really accepting of that and it's like i think we're a quite a pro progressive society i mean we're doing quite well i think and so i think people are not so quick to judge anymore and give you a chance you know like i i, I think I, even in london where sort of people are generally a bit more rough around the edges like i think i've seen a lot of people be a lot nicer recently which is quite nice i mean I, i'm northern so i'm used to people just saying hi down the street but i think it, it's starting to be a thing where people are a little bit a little bit nicer and I'm, I'm covered in tattoos i often wear all black i don't normally wear this jersey so i you know yeah. i get I, I get looks but it's a lot less these days i think so i think it's quite you know i think the, the soap lancaster foundation's obviously raising awareness and doing a good job so that's what we like. Yeah, I thought um, what was really nice to see was, you know, obviously sort of COVID put everything on hold. Um, but the moment the festival started to open up again, I think people were like back on it, which was really nice to see. Um, yeah. So, you know. Everyone's back in that sort of friendly vibe and ready to socialise, you know. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Bringing it back to you guys, obviously you're here because you won Metal to the Masses in London. What was that moment like when you had your name called out? Well, I mean, it was crazy that the crowd went over. It was so surreal, man. We had a chat. I could still got every time we are the champions plays, I get this like free hit of dopamine because it just <laughs> played out the whole song. It's like six minutes long or whatever it is, and just taking it all in, going on stage and see, seeing everyone chanting TBK it was just so so surreal. Like it, it was really vindicating for us because, like, I mean, over the past year, I've sort of questioned the effort and time that I'm putting into it because you know it doesn't make money, it doesn't make any money you know like yeah. I'm working I work a full-time job as well like both both of us do all of us do actually in the band and it's just like struggling for time and I've got a missus and you know I've like I've got, it's, and it really just made me think actually what I'm doing is is worth it man and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm stick it's giving me a new lust for life and like I'm, I'm ready for it man I'm ready to take on this opportunity was it one of those moments where you heard your name cry and you just went oh well done to them <laughs> if I'm honest, no. I was just so fucking gassed. Yeah, I like, yeah, I nearly yeah, hit the yeah. floor, mate. Like, yeah, honestly, I'm, I was so buzzing. I mean, mm. I, I'll talk to you, but yeah, I was. Yeah, I mean, for me as well. We had the moment we won. It was, it was just crazy. We were just absolutely elated to, to have won. But then we had a party at mine, and it, it got really emotional because we were all sat by the fire until 6 a.m. in the morning, you know. And and, and, and that, I feel like that really gave me as well like a spark of motivation to, to be like, oh yeah, we're we're here with a group of friends, you know, enjoying the moments and yeah. Of Calvin, actually, very cheeky because he, he, he planned a party for after the final. If we hadn't have won, that would have been the saddest party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we sat there crying around a fire, drinking tap water, just like <laughs> oh, man, that's next called year, next confidence, year. my yeah, friend. Yeah, no, it's I extreme, like it. it's extreme confidence. I mean, fair play to him, he manifested it or whatever that bullshit is. Yeah, you know. I mean, I'm German, I kind of have to, right? <laughs> Before we let you get out of here, though, you released a brand new single yesterday, I yes, believe. Indeed, I saw. We did, yeah. I'd ask how it's been going, but I don't even know to even get internet to check, have you? Yeah, no, not being able to check it out, but personally, it's my favourite of the of the most recent releases. It's a song about my dog, Tibbs, that I lost a couple of years ago, and it's a song for all of the people who have lost a companion, lost a pet, and uh, that lost that, that, that being that's there for you no matter what. Um, it's such a sad, such a sad thing, man. It's so, so depressing to lose an animal like that. And it's just one for everyone who's lost a pet. And it's a, it's a bit slower. There's a nice metal bridge in it, but it's catchy and uh, means a lot to me. So I hope it means a lot to them guys. That's amazing. And yeah, the song really resonated with me as well because I mean, just like I said, I lost a pet as well when I was younger, and it was it, it was really refreshing because most songs are about losing obviously someone as, as a person. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I thought it was really refreshing to, to hear a song about actually someone losing a pet because I feel like that's something that a lot of people can resonate to, but a lot not a lot of songs are about that, which yeah, is really no, just quite agreed. quite nice. I was gonna say I, I do love the irony. We just had this discussion of a dissertation about Satanism in metal, and then you just release a song about losing a pet. Like, the contrast. Yeah. It's fucking well, great. This is the thing, man. Like metalheads are just friendly. They're just the friendliest people. Come say hi. Absolutely. Like, you know. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time out of chat. Thank you, mate. Thank, thank you. Honestly, thank you guys. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hope thank we you. see you down there. Yeah.